talking to the youths now. And uh, this morning we started talking about in-laws. That's in Yoruba we call them Anno. We started talking about in-laws. And uh, we learned a lot in the first service. I mean a lot. And uh, it is going to be important. It is important for you because the issue of in-law is very, very important. If you don't handle it rightly, you might get hot in the process. When we started in the first service, we just called it in-laws. And we established from Matthew 19, 4 and 5, that in-laws are biblical, they exist. The Bible says, therefore, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. So, in-laws are those you are related to by marriage. That's why you have brother-in-law, you have sister-in-law, you have father-in-law, you have mother-in-law. We also said in the first service that in order to enjoy, to manage your in-laws well, you, the first thing is that you must get it right at the foundation. Now, what do we do right at the foundation? We said it in the first service that don't marry your, your wife or your husband into your father or mother's house while they are still alive or else that your spouse will not be respected. Then there are certain things that will happen. We talked about that. Watch it online. We also talked about number two, do not expect too much from your in-laws in order for you not to nurse hatred. Since they are not your biological parents, they don't know you much. They only came to know you by marriage. So there are some things about you they won't know. Stop thinking they should understand you. My mother-in-law should understand me. My father-in-law should understand. They can't understand you. Even if they are going to understand you, it's going to take a very long time. So don't expect too much. You know, some of you will say they don't know how I feel. They don't know uh, uh, my nature. You know, we talked about that in the first service. And we also talked about how should you undo the situation when you feel not understood. That if you feel that your in-laws don't understand you, how do you undo it? We talked about five points in the first service. Do not allow the spirit of offense so that you not misbehave. Number two, do not re report them to your spouse. If you report them to your spouse, your spouse may be motivated by your love, by the love he or she has for you to go and fight his parents. And you are still going to be the one to suffer it. Three, we talked about do not talk to, to uh, sorry, do not talk to an inexperienced person or else you, you might be misguided. Four, we said, do not tell your parents about it. They may become emotional and decide to go and attack your spouse's family and you'll still be the one to suffer it. Then five, we said, talk to your counselor, a mature person with the proof of a happy home. Then number three, we talked about the third point. We said, don't start what you know you will not be able to continue. The moment you are coming into marriage, don't start with, with your in-laws what you will not be able to continue. You see some women, because they want her, they are, to be married into that family, they go to their in-laws' places to go and wash clothes. Some will go and be cooking ahead. Some will even be sending money to their, to their in-laws so that they can accept them. Listen, don't start what you can't continue. If you start it, you will raise their expectation. When you come in, if you drop it, they will attack you because... You have raised their appetite, and now you are feeding them less. Praise the Lord. So we said, be real. Be who you are from the beginning. If they will marry you, they will marry you. If the lady will marry you, you will marry. If the man will marry If the family will like you, they will like you. If they will not like you, they will not like you. Am I communicating? Don't start what you know you will not be able to continue. Then it was Mama that preached that. We also said, we answered the question that somebody asked, sir. I have built my relationship with my in-laws on falsehood, which means I've pretended and they have liked me. Now it's hurting me. How can I stop? And we answered it clearly that open up to your spouse, tell him or her to help you. That like me supply. You know, they have the, the demand is higher than my supply. So what do I do? Tell your spouse. He should be the one to know how to quench it before his family members. Two, we said, pray, about the, for, pray for God's intervention. Three, we said, do not allow their reaction to get you offended because they will react. They will say you have changed. Praise the Lord. Then number three, then number four, Mama preached on this. Your in-law is not your immediate family. Understand that they are, there are certain things 
you should never expect from them. Now, and we said, number one, do not share your ugly past with your in-laws, no matter what. Don't tell them how many abortions you have made. You know, some of you say, ah, my mother-in-law is nice. So let me tell her, when we have just talking, mommy, I have abortion 25. If I can talk about your money, if you mistakenly have delay, it will be like crony. Abi, Kumasofi, Yaya, work where in fact, mommy, Taba, my Rui, Buti, Muti, Mulayemi. Ah, Uti, the Mama, Kuyo, my own Lola. Hallelujah. We also said, under it, do not allow them do certain houseworks for you. Man, run one, nine share, Mama, run non share, Kusiki, Kiria, no, one, we are to repay Yako. Or Baba Oko, or Abru Oko, Abru Yawu. Anybody that is your in-law that lives within your house, don't use them for house as house help. No matter what, because if you use them, no matter, even if you are their senior, they will carry your matter to places that when you hear it, you'll be shocked. Put your in-laws where in honorable positions. Now, Mama said, if you need any assistance at home, go and get house help. Glad? We are just telling you what we studied in the first service. Then she said, finally, do not owe your in-laws. No matter what, do your best to live within your means so as to maintain financial integrity. It's not a good place to go and owe. The place of your in-law is not a good place to owe. Maintain good financial status before them. That was what we studied in the first service. For further details, Go and listen to it online. And if you're on our page, it must have been sent to your WhatsApp group. So let's start the second one. Let's open it with Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10. Ecclesiastes 10, 10. That's what we used to start today. Today is being dedicated to teaching on in-laws. That's one of the things causing problems in marriage in Africa. Because here, our culture is different from the culture of the whites. Hear me. Don't run that kind of a, a white man's marriage. In a, you know, some of you have watched home video. Home video. Home video. It's not real. Most of those things are not real. Let's stand up as we read together. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. Let's be on our feet in honor of God's word. Thank you. Let's rise. Brother Inka, I'm waiting. Rise, rise, rise. Are we all standing? Oh, mercy. Oh, yeah. Mommy, so yeah, if you are, if it's, don't worry, if the baby is sleeping on your lap, just leave it. Stay. One, two, and let's go. If the iron be blunt and he do not wet the air, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is what? Profitable to direct. Please be seated. Where we are actually losing now is wisdom is what? Profitable to direct. Now, which means if you engage wisdom, you will have access to what? Profit. If you engage wisdom, you will have direction. You have access to direction. You know, some of you will be wondering, all these things that pastor and mama are preaching, where do they see it? We have been married for 20 years. And our, the beginning of our marriage was not easy. Okay, is this a question from somebody? If my in-law should come and he or she is my junior, Am I the one to finish, to fetch water for him or her? Allow his brother or her brother to tell her to, what to do. For instance, you know, my own wife is the last born. She does not have any junior. But if she's the first born and her sister comes to stay in our house, I won't fetch water for her. I won't send her to fetch water. It is her sister that she, and courtesy that should teach her. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you cleared? Her sister and... Ma? Ma, sir? They themselves will know. That's what I said about courtesy. But one need to go courtesy because I want to come more courtesy. You know, I've, 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 I said yeah, I have it in plan that one day I will dedicate one, son, one service to teaching on courtesy. So many people don't know it. You know, courtesy is all about using your common sense. I'm telling you, some people don't know it. Some people will see an elder walking beside them. An elder they know, holding a bag. They will still be looking. Some people will see, there will be two, only one chair. They will sit down. An elder will walk in. 
and they'll be looking at the it is common sense that should tell you that the day for one lati joko. I'm okay, school ni church. Ah, if I meet him, I want your mean by Madame Milipia, or Lord, you will match it better. So one day I will create time, you know. I won't criticize you, but I will help you. I will create time for the teaching of courtesy one day. My wife will remind me. Uh, Brother Precious is my PA. He will remind me. Apostle will remind me. Hallelujah. So let's go into what we have today. Wisdom being profitable to direct. Now, what is my own first point this morning? I will speak on two. My wife will come and speak on the rest. Do your best to make sure that love for your in-law is balanced. I come again. Do your best to make sure that love for your in-law is balanced. Make sure that love is not one-sided. Now, one of the things that causes jealousy and causes crises in several marriages is when in-laws discover that the love that they express towards them is not balanced. For instance, most times it is always common that the mother of the wife is, uh, enjoys more love than the husband, uh, or mother of the husband. Most times it happens like that in Africa, but it's not good. Or else you will just tear up a battle for yourself. You just tear up a battle, you know, for instance, there is public holiday, you know, and you want to travel. Now, your wife will want you, let's go to, our, to my father's fa- my, my own family. The husband too will say, let's go to my family. Balance it. Make sure that the love is not one-sided. I have handled several cases in these 23 years as a pastor and 20 years as a couple, as a married man. I have seen cases. Like, I remember I, I hurt my mom when we gave birth to, was it Neola when we gave birth to that time? You know, and uh, my mother, my, my wife's mother was around. Was it Neola? Yes. And you know, my wife happens to be the last born of the family. So her mom was around. And I happen to be the first son of my mom. The first son of an Igbo woman is like her husband. That's why they always call him Opara. My mom doesn't joke with me. If she finished cooking food, if they kill a whole chicken, they'll be waiting for me to make my choice. And that time, in my foolishness, I will go for chicken head. I am the head. Give me the head. In my foolishness. It was when I got married, I discovered that there's a place called the lab. I didn't know. So no matter what we eat, they will give me the head. And I will say, I'm the head. I'm the head. <laughs> so imagine, my mom now moved to my house too. My mother-in-law, my wife's mom was in my house. My mom was in my house. She came to take care of the firstborn of her first son. And my mother's, my wife's mom came to take care of the firstborn of her last one. Ah, it was serious. And if you're an Igbo person, an Igbo person, you know that when Igbos want to cook, their soup is more expensive than any kind of soup that a Yoruba person wants to cook. And I didn't have this money. So my mom, we want to cook. Now, it's not that she wants to show up. Oh, she wants to take care of us. She will cook fish. She will, I'm the one bringing the money. We'll cook meat. We'll cook everything. And when they want to serve, the way we eat is not the way she eats. She serves us. She will serve me with meat. She will serve me with fish. In our house, we calculate. calculate days of soup. But with my mom in the house, we were cooking almost every day. But I made a very, very foolish decision. So I, I prevailed over my wife one day and I told my wife, I said, see, we are going to dedicate this baby she said she just did CS. We did our first child, in fact, our three children, CS. The first, and it was her first time. She needed enough rest. But I wanted to go dedicate the child so that my mother can go. You know, with my mother-in-law, she can manage with her daughter. But my, I, my, my wife cannot complain. Even when they serve, she said when they serve her two, at times, two pieces of meat, two fish, and my mom will be saying, yeah, me see, Jeon J, Jeon J, come ring cover. So I hurt my mom. 
when I told her that we are dedicating the child, we dedicated Ediola, and I said, I bought some things for her. Mommy, you can go. But her own mom, I told to remain. I didn't know that she was hot. She was, it was so serious, she developed high blood prayer. It was so serious. It was so serious. It was And it affected my relationship with her. I tried to see if I could correct, but I could not correct it till she died. Because after taking care of her, we gave back to her. She couldn't wait. She traveled out of the country. Then she passed on. Now, what am I saying? Balance the love. If you don't balance the love, you will make one side to become jealous. And when they begin to feel jealous, a battle can start from there. Are you hearing me? Love your spouse's family the same way you love your family. If you are going to distribute gifts, okay, we are giving uh, money to your mom, we are giving to my mom. Give it equally. If you are going to visit, visit, okay, we have three days to spend. Let's spend one day with your mom. Let's spend one day with my own. And let's go and spend the remaining one days with ourselves. And see it so that you will not trigger jealousy. You know, even if your spouse's parents don't know, your spouse knows. When your mom mother comes, you serve, and your husband's mother or your wife's mother come and you serve, your spouses will feel bad. They will come to be serving you to me. To bad idea you are to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that you will not create problems for yourself. Now, the Bible didn't tell us all these things, so, but this is why I'm showing you that wisdom, the Bible says, is what? Profitable to direct. And you should also understand that life sits on one law. What's that law? Genesis 8, 22. The law of seed, time, and harvest. The Bible says as long as the earth endures, seed, time, and harvest will not cease. So anything you do to, their, to your in-laws will be done back to you when you also become an in-law. I wrote here, balance the visits depending on locations and balance the respects and gifts. What's the first thing to balance? Balance the visits. If her mommy cannot come to you, your mommy too cannot come. If your mommy has been given access to visit at any time, give her mommy too access to visit at any time. Give them the respect. After all, how many years are they going to spend with you before they will pass to the, next, to the, to, to the realm of glory? So balance everything. Balance what? What's the first thing to balance? The visits. Depending on location, balance the respect and balance the gifts. Now let's go deeper. I, I quickly want to branch. Let's quickly give this advice to in-laws. Now those of you that are in-laws too, write down and pay attention to these seven advice. If you have become an in-law, you will also become one day. Know your limits, number one. Know your limits. Respect yourself. Don't place too much demand on your son or daughter-in-law. Know your limit. Know your, know, your, know your junction. Don't place too much demand on your son-in-law or daughter-in-law. Don't place too much demand. My wife, she had one experience in the morning. It happened to one of her daughters here. She proposed, he proposed to the young sister lady. This lady took her to, their, to her father's place. Her daddy has gone to collect money from Lapo. So every week, daddy, they were all Lapo, son. Our brother, hello, Lagbaja Bolua. Baminli. So every week, this brother will be called by her father, by the husband to be his uh, daddy, father in law, to be yes, and he would demand him for 225. 225. 225. 225. First one, I will give her. Second one, I will give her. Third one, I will give her. Third one, I the brother had to call the sister. Or rather, the need to sue me. It will like you also say to me, you want that daddy, daddy, mean that two, two, five. One guy. And the first thing the daddy told her, told the young brother, when he called, he said, My dear, come on me, boy. Oh, mommy, you got the book. I'm going to go to 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 the book. But he got to, it was getting too much. Every in-law here should understand this. Know your limit. Next 
o ba ba yin for sure o tu wa ko ja nso ya na ifa aso mi ti e tun tu ti wa nu yara mi ti e mo mi ma se se abi wi abi wa de duro no 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 know your limit know your limits give yourself respect am i communicating number 2 because this time is running fast number 2 limit your visits do not make it too frequent or, the, or, or, or sorry or else familiarity will set in I'm talking to the in-laws now. Limit your visits. Don't make it too frequent. Or else, familiarity will come in. Or else, you just see that one day you get to the gate, you will knock, go, 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 go. They say, who is that? And you say, it's me. And you still be knocking. Familiarity in Bonnie. That's why, hear me. Make sure that, listen, if you are an in-law, be a prospering in-law. Don't be a kind of in-law that will have to depend on whatsoever your children are bringing before you begin to survive. Limit your visits. Number three, do not make your decision, hear me, based only on what your son or daughter tells you about his or her spouse. Don't just wake up and say, ah, my daughter told me that you are rude. My daughter told me that you are not nice. My daughter told me that you bitter. My, my son told me that you are not supportive. And the next thing, you pick up phone and begin to call your children's spouse. It's wrong, go. What did I say? It's wrong. No matter what your children tell you about their spouse, that's their husband or wife, the first thing to do is to pray. The next thing is to use wisdom to find out. Not that you just carry the phone or you start coming. Don't make decision based on one sided information. You are an in law, you are placed in the place of respect. Now, and once you are placed in the place of respect, behave respect, respectably. T take your time to listen. Okay, I've had you, my daughter. Okay, I've had. Your, your husband did this. Oh, I've had you, my son. Your wife did this. There's no problem. Carefully take time to listen to the other side. Most times, you discover that if you are calm enough to listen to the other side, you will discover that what you were told is not actually how it happened. Number Four, do not put up any attitude that will make your children's spouse to believe you are taking sides. Don't put up any attitude that will make your, ch your children's spouse to believe you are taking side. Don't behave in such a way that will make them to feel that eh, she has listened to her son, she has listened to her daughter. Okay, this is the reaction. You have to be neutral. Quickly, let's rush because of time. Number five, do not make yourself a liability to your children. They have their families to raise. That's why every young person that is here, you are privileged. You two are going to become an elder soon. This is the best time to, for you to lay the foundation that will not make you depend on your children in the future. Do you know that this term, look up, this term, Onjeomo, is not by Blika. Oh, you don't know. He said the righteous man leave it an inheritance behind for his children. The Bible says, hear me, he said it is in the responsibility of parents to leave houses and wealth behind for their children. But a good wife only God can give. So where did you see it in your Bible that your child is an investment? If I invest on this side at old age, you'll be giving me more money. No. It's not an investment. It's not a share that you buy and you'll be getting dividends from. Labor. Secure your old age. Tell your neighbor, secure your old age. Now, when you secure your old age, now, I was in a family meeting of ours. I'm rushing because of my time. And they, they, they gathered us together because one of one of my stepbrothers was going to collect rent from the tenants of the house that my dad left before he died. So the, my dad's younger sister now called, called us together. In the process of the meeting, he was now sharing. 
He said, Pastor, something happened. That her first son died. You know, he's a computer engineer. The young man died. So they, re they relocated his wife to Lagos. The son of that, uh, son, that's a, the first grandson, mission. Mama said, she's not so that old, but she's old. Mama said, where she sat, somebody now called her mommy. She to yeni. Akobi omoyi. Again, admission. Our lori Facebook we one need your well admission. Yeah, why be sorry Facebook? The wife put it, the mother put it on Facebook that my son gained admission. The father just died. Please, we need them. My father's sister said when he had the first thing that came to his head, her, her head, she called the young girl, the, the wife of the son. Ah, ah, you rubbish, won't you? grandma told you on money, mini. Mokoli leko. Mon she share. Tori awon mo mi ni mo se sise e lo ni owo school yen pastor bi mo se pe mo de send owo yen si ko lo san owo school iru grammar to ye ko je ni e to ba je ru grammar yen iyawo omo kan kan o ni rubbish e oko mo o ni rubbish e but o le je ru grammar yen to ba faro e sere you can't be that kind of grammar if you are using your now to be buying ashwe be all about Use your now to invest on the tomorrow. You had mommy told us during women's conference now about a grandma that went to start school in a town. And she started sending money to her children. See a woman by root. Transfer was her county. Oh my respect if when it's straight. Oh come where to buy ya weary. My buy my low weary for transfer was her county. Oh my mommy and nice me more more. To read to him, I respect your money. Say here, say here. So don't make yourself a liability. What's number six now? No, where are we now? Number six. Do not demonstrate one sided kind of love with your grandchildren. Hear me, I'm talking to the in laws now. Love them equally. Because some people, when you are, you, I discover from experience and from counseling that some. Parents are nice to the child, grandchildren of the mother that takes care of them, of their child that takes care of them. Okay, kids who are alone need the same character. So, I'm not too bad to nice, you know. What told you on my? It's too bad to nice, you know. It happened to my wife now, my wife that time, when they were young. Their grandmother, when there was crisis in Ibadan, all of them, all the children took their, 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 their took their, uh, uh, they took their grandchildren to their, to their grandma. He said, the grandma will now give them the gari that her own mom was able to provide. He will now open bomb vita to the other ones. They grew up to, to hate her. And lastly, under it, develop love and forgiving spirits for your children-in-law. The same way you have it for your own children. Your own children offend you. Why would you not be saying, my, 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 my wife, my, my daughter's husband is rude. I will not forgive him. That's one-sided forgiveness. Your own children, for, they hurt you. And see, you see, well, well. You find the proper for your children. Akili or Moburuku. Perfect Abi. Fekun Paje. But when your children's spouse now offend you, ah, Koleko. Oh, Niro will perform to have a family. If you do like this, you will lose your respect. So let's be true with that. My last point for today, we are true with that instruction for in laws. Now let's come back to couples now. As a couple, as a couple, Discuss how you want your spouse to relate with your family members. These are things you discuss in courtship and even when you are married. As a husband, as a wife, two of you should discuss how, how, how I expect you to, discuss, to relate with my family. How I want you to relate with my younger ones. Discuss it, discuss it and reach to a conclusion. You don't know that these are things that you must discuss that will make you to have peace. 
That's why you see in some families, you hear the man will be saying, you know, my dear, my dear, I don't play, I don't joke with my mom. I love my mom. Please, my dear, if you want me to continue to love you, please help me love my mom the way I love her. The same thing too. You ask the wife, don't rubbish your father. Tell your husband too. Dear, my dear, I don't joke with my dad and my mom. In fact, I don't joke with my sister. There's one barista along at Denichi Road. He was canceling one of our members. He said, when I want, he said when he wanted to marry his wife, the wife told him, if you want to marry me, you must marry my mother along. I am the only child of my mom. So if you cannot marry my mom along, you cannot marry me. They said it from the beginning. The lawyer said, he now asks the wife, how do you want me to marry your mom? He said, wherever I live is where my mother will live. Wherever I'm doing business is where my mother will be doing business. If you agree, let's marry. You know what the lawyer said? He said, I agreed from the beginning. Up to today, we live together. When we got a place for her to do business, they are together. If my wife wants to go on vacation abroad, they are together. He said, that is the condition she has given me from the beginning. These are things you discuss. If you discuss it and agree, you will have peace. Say I hear. I'm summarizing. So I wrote here, discuss your expectations and listen to know if your spouse will be able to cope. Make sure both of you reach an agreeable point. Make sure you reach an agreeable point. Now I now gave a list of some of the things you discussed over your family. One, where do you want the children to spend the holidays? It just saw. So I not be like a mystery. Discuss it. During holidays, ah, maybe during Christmas, oh my dear, move a man lolisha. Gilisha like my mama should do. Et it just so it just agree. Oh, con the fun la jibu loss on aye. Oh, con the loss of the Yashina. Yashina. Oh yeah. Kelwe. And Lolisha. Gilisha like my shot do. Ah. Discuss it. And when we say discuss, you know what is discussion? Discussion is not enforcement, too. Discussion is you are talking to make a person understand. Both of you will reach a conclusion. At least I know the East Yalas. They go every December to the East. At first, they used to go to your family, Abi. Then when they finish, after some days, they now move to the wife's family and spend some days. After they have done that, they will now be coming back to Ibadan. There's no how they can do that if they have not reached it, a, 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 an agreeable point. Under it too, you discuss this. If you will like any of your relatives to live with you, discuss it. My dear, you know what? I don't know. I don't know. I want my, my, my brother, my cousin. It's not something you just wake up one morning and say, I just have to tell you. They are on the way from the east. You say, who are they? They are my family members. They are four. They are going to be staying with us on tomorrow. It's wrong. Unless you don't want to raise happy home. Three, if you will be spending time in your parents' house, discuss it. You know, there are some people, they, they so much respect their parents that when they give back to children, that's where they do naming. Yeah, there's nothing bad in it. If both of you can agree. Oh, my dear, every first, uh, January 1st, so, although parents will like to at the mass overnight. Discuss it. Another thing you should discuss, if you will be spending, okay, I've seen that, how both of you hope to support your extended family. Both of you should discuss. Bao Lashi Mama support our parents who are, and when you are, discuss it. Hallelujah. These are things you should reach agreement on so that no one of you will feel bitter. Finally, discuss how you want them to be taken care of when they visit. How do you want them to be taken care of? Okay, if your mom should come, if your dad should come, how should they be taken? You know, discuss it. Not that when the parents come, you say, honey, you know that there is no room and there is no bed. Where do you want them to stay? But you know, if you have reached a conclusion, it will be easy for both of you to manage your family. The Lord bless you. Let's welcome Mama. She come up. If you are clapping, clap. Hallelujah.
Praise God. Now the, um, okay, from my own point here, I will say, do not discourage your spouse from taking care of his or our family. Do not discourage your spouse from taking care of his or our family. Because you don't really know how they invested or how much they have invested on your spouse. You know, some family will say, he's our head. Being the first son of the family, let's train him. Let's support him. Let's come together to push him forward so that if he's educated, he can help others. Do you understand? Now, okay, like I know a family. I and Papa were discussing about that. Was it not last, yeah, last week or so? We said, you remember how they raised this particular guy? The only land, the landed property in the family, they sold it so that he can go to school and send others. So we were aware of it. They came, the family came and we discussed. And that was how they pushed him, okay, let's support you with this. And everything coming into the family, everybody is pushing it that when he becomes, you know, they believe that he's okay, we can be of help to him. And uh, after some time, God blessed him, he's okay. But we discovered that he doesn't remember them. And you know all this, when they, anytime we discuss, I say, what is the wife doing? Because she knows about this. Why can't she come up and talk to the husband on how they can help the, 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 the siblings of this guy? These are the things that we need to put in place. And all the siblings now, they are not looking at the wife as if she's the one that stopped their brother from helping them. The in-law matter, as we said, is something very, very important that we have to take with high esteem. You know, during my, uh, when I was sharing my home, at the other, I mentioned some points, and I said, there are people you have to uh, put a kind of, uh, how would I call it, that you should not cross your boundary. Put, put them in high esteem in such a way that Put them where they're supposed to be. Don't cross your boundary. Do your part. And at the end of the day, we are still on it, praying for that family. But the point is, every high is on the wife. So, at the course of uh, the, the, what do you call it, the uh, relationship, this course, let them know. One of our, 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 our deacon here share one time with us. He said, everybody knows that they sent me to school to train my younger ones. So they discussed when they were courting. I have to take care of all my young, younger ones. All my siblings must go to school. My parents sent me to school so that I can raise my, my siblings. So even as they were fighting, the wife have it in mind that Okomilo ma train our burue. And with confidence, she used to say that I don't oppose them I don't oppose him training them. And to the glory of God today, we are happy. We see them. They are like an example for us. That yes, any open your glory and our bread. He makes sure he put them where they are, are well settled. So why? Let's learn. You you just into that family and said, I don't want you to, I don't want you to mingle with any of your siblings. Do you know where he's coming from? Do you know where she's coming from? They train her or train him so that he can help the younger ones. So don't push him away from his family members. Don't push her away from a family member. So some families, I, we, we, I wrote here, some family put all, almost everything together so that they can help the senior one or the one they know that only only Ophelati Denny Giga. And after becoming great, you just come in and say, I don't want, uh, no, 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 it's true, not be. Please, we beg you. We are using this message to put things in order because the, we, we are uh, married supposed to train and to, 
to to be okay should be in the Christian in the Christian fold. It should be from the church. And everybody will be there and say, I wish I can, my family can be like this family because they are they are child of God. They are children of God. In fact, I love the pattern of their lifestyle. It should be. Not that they say, ah, family. Hey, it should not be. Hallelujah. I say in some families, your spouse or is their hope. Or it could be either the woman or the you know or the man. God has given that person the grace that Eja can't see what you let's ah, let him be the one that will lead others after getting there. Have you not seen, we've heard so many times that some people will travel abroad after everybody wants it, become so great. Only for the person to get there and say, forget about those in Nigeria. I will first of all take care of myself. Please don't turn your spouse against the family. Don't be like that. Because, see, and I, 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 I noticed something. Do you know something? Which I always, uh, at times when I'm, I decided to be alone. I'll be thinking that oh, <laughs> somebody is telling you, no, no, we will not agree. No, your mommy, your daddy is not good. And you to you, they are pushing you. You are going. Sometimes sit down. Check the beginning. How do we start? My brothers, my sisters, Ajaya. Will I just leave them now that I'm comfortable? Somebody is telling you, don't look toward their direction. And you too, you, you are blindfolded because of love. Always sit down and think. Now we are going, everybody is going through stress just because they want me to prosper. And I'm okay now. Will I just leave them like that? Check your mind. Do what is right. Take care of your people. And also, be in support of his own people too. Don't say because I'm married now, me, more family, me. Take care of both family, and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Number H, okay? Always remember to apply the principle of love for your in-laws. Love, L-O-V-E, is the reason why we don't see fault in people. Love is the reason why we don't see fault in people. When fault becomes obvious, love is dying. Love them. They are not perfect. I was reading a, a, a portion when Papa was up here in the book of Exodus chapter 18. Exodus chapter 18 and verse 5. Exodus 18 verse 5. Can we please open it? Let's see it together. Exodus chapter 18 verse 5. Look at this scripture. It says, I, it, 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 can, can, can we please, let's start from verse 1. There's something I saw there that we can jump. When Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, held of all that God has done for Moses and for Israel's people, and that the Lord has brought Israel out of Egypt. Verse 2. Let's be quick. Let's be fast, please. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back. Look at that scripture. Please go back. Verse 2. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after Moses had sent her back. Oh, that one, lolly. But verse 10, look at what happened. Verse 10. Jump, because of our time. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord, who has... Ah, no, 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 verse 5. No, no, no. Sorry, verse 5. I'm sorry, verse 5. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife, Unto Moses in the wilderness, where he encamped at the mount of God. Verse 6. And he said unto Moses, I, thy father-in-law Jethro, am come unto thee and thy wife, and her two sons with her. Verse 7. And Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and did what? He bowed. He, he gave him honor. He kissed the man, embraced him. And brought the man inside. After Moses has sent back his wife. Do you get anything from that scripture? Moses and the wife, they are having issues. But the concern, the father-in-law. You are fighting you and your wife. 
What is the problem with the, with the family? Do you know something happened? I met a, 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 a woman. After some time, I don't know, something happened. The man was misbehaving, doing rubbish, doing rubbish, doing rubbish. I don't know whether he died or something happened. Do you know when everybody were saying, ah, his wife knows about the death, the parents of the husband came up and said, lie ye, share more bit and we, we share more bit. We'll take care of this woman. And they begin to take care of her and the children. Because of what? The relationship. Look at it. Always remember to apply the principle of love for your in-laws. Love is the reason why we don't see faults in people. Not that they will not do mistakes. Sephora, I believe she was not there with all the things God did to Moses in the wilderness. Maybe that was one of the reasons the man sent her back. Chama Bati Elo. But the relationship with the man and the father-in-law, we are still in touch. The Bible says, she he now brought everybody. But despite that, Moses still honor. He still loves the family. No matter what has happened, let the bygone be bygone. You know, I was saying something in the first service. I said, I will, I will remind you of the issue of the soup. Okay. It was now, they said, by force, by fire. You must be cooking. Maybe if they want to test how I can cook, you know. I was unable to do that on the way. So, and I begin to cook every week. My husband would say, I don't want to cook for mommy. Go and give her. And I begin to do that. Do you know the funniest part of it? Eh? I don't used to come back and tell him, in my present year, if I should take the soup to mommy, mommy will call, Iya Rashida, Iya Kinekon, Everybody will share it in my present. Ah, Odun, thank you, mommy. In my present, I want to get If I come back home, I will not tell my husband. The reason is because I don't want him to eat his mom. He always tells me that I like, I love my mom. I like her. And I don't want to, them to, I don't want to turn they are back against each other. Not from my mouth. I don't know whether you, are, you understand. We, despite all the faults that I can see that Furara Mimo face Do you know, for once, there was one that happened when I gave us to Eniola after mommy left, as she, he said. No, she was still around. I think it was after the naming. I came out of surgery the theater room with 17%. PCV, my PCV was 17%. Those of us who have been on that level, you will understand what I mean. My hear, I cannot hear what you are saying. Oh, what cloudy that, boo, 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 you, that's what I'll be hearing. I cannot see clearly. All my body, boo, boo, leave, see me. You can see that this woman, it is well with her. So my mommy was managing me. She did not allow them to give me blood. She said, she can manage me. So, we were at home one day, and then she kept saying, ah, and I want to eat pepper soup. I wish I could eat pepper soup. I want pepper soup. And you know something like that? He said, I said, so should we cook pepper soup? He said, no. My daughter is in Moscow. We are living down the road here. Some of us, we know that street. If it told black, any loss. So she said she wants pepper soup, and my daughter is there with her husband. Who can go and help me to collect pepper soup? And there was nobody at home. My husband in church in the office. So how will I do it? And they asked me not to move an inch. In fact, during the name, my the doctor was with us in the house. He said, in case if any mistake should happen, the mafia she mistake cause a learning. So and this mama wants to eat pepper soup. She came because she wants to come and help me to nurse my baby. My mother too was inside sleeping with the baby. So I just checked, I peeped through, I noticed that my mom was asleep. I just, and we were living upstairs. Musharora, Mugwe, Kini, Gasket, Musharora, Sokale. I came down. And if you know this, our road, you will know that it's not something easy. It's just as if you are going towards this uh, Adeniji Street. You know how that place is summer hilly. So I just decided, let me climb it. As I was coming, I was feeling. You know, my heart was beating fast. See how Sister Jumon is looking at me. She understands. If I understand, I can understand better. 
what went wrong that time. The team was beating fast. E, e, I know I am crossing my battery. But I said, because of her, I will go and get the pepper soup. So I came up. As I got to Moscow, as the husband of my sister-in-law sighted me from afar, he ran towards me. If you know him, that's his own style. He just carried me. I said, somebody carried me. <laughs> no, I've already reduced in weight. Carried me on the chair. He started blowing me. Who asked you to come here? Jesus! Who asked you to come? I said, mommy said she wants to eat pepper soup. I said, I told her I will be bringing the pepper soup. I said, I want to help. So I sat on the chair. He was blowing. He said they should sell the pepper soup for me. <laughs> she packed everything. He said, I will follow you to the house. Ah. He said, I said, don't worry. If my mommy should see you, yeah, she, she will kill me. Because she, does not, she must not know I'm outside. So only for me to get there. And I said, how are we going to do it? This one that you are feeling like this. Before you will stroll down the road again, it will be hellfire. Let me hold you. She not had my hand. He had me. He said, let's go. As I got down, I said, please be going. I, I will go. As I was coming up, trying to move a little, I sighted my mom from afar. I said, well, I did. Because my mom will not take it. So as I got closer to, the, to, the, to our gates. I said, ah, how am I going? She, she, I, I just met her. I said, oh yeah, who asked you to go and eat pepper soup? Mommy, eh, mommy said, oh no, my eat pepper soup, you have to eat pepper soup for me. Ah, oh yeah, let down one, let down one. Today, we will enter into war together. I said, mommy, please, pastor must not hear. Please, I don't want two of them to fight. I only want to help her to get the pepper soup. I said, which rubbish pepper soup? Pepper soup, oh she, pepper soup, you know, she was for me. My mommy doesn't talk anyhow anyway. But if she gets hungry. Ha, so only for me to get up. Ha, she just managed to carry me. You know, held my hand very well. So that I will not fall. Because already I've started feeling the, the thing again. As I got up there, she went to go and lay me on the bed. She now went. Mommy, no. She said, yeah, me see. Did I ask you to go? And that's how she normally called me. Call me. Yeah, me see. Did I say you should go? Did you go? My mommy said, you rubber so much money, mommy. Mommy. And that's how I shot out. I was begging her, please don't say anything. But mom, my mommy was so hungry. You know, some things came up. She said, do you know? I did not tell anybody. In the evening, grandma just carried her back. Let me say, I will be coming tomorrow. Let me go and see what is going on in my house. She packed her things, the little of her clothes and the pepper soup. She went away. My mother said, let her go. Let her go so that at least there will be peace in the house. When my husband came back, I did not tell him anything. All what I'm sharing now, it was a year before her death, before I could be able to tell my husband that you know something happened. So, so, and so, so time. He said, no wonder. Because three or four days after, my mother-in-law refused to come back to our house. You want peace in your marriage. Forgive and forget. But we were best of friends before she died. You want to say everything. Wife, you want to say everything. You are causing commotion in your marriage. Don't you want to have peaceful? Home? There are some things you bear. Forgive, forget, and let it go. For 20 years, don't you think I've do you think I've not faced anything? Ah, it is plenty. My mother-in-law came up and said one day, she's a lazy woman. If God called your husband, did God call you? And that was how everybody started raising it. If God called the husband, did God call you? If God called the husband. That was the same statement from every family member. And I was so provoked. I told my husband, you met me where? But this one, I will go back and start. And that's what you are saying now. I am mean, everywhere. But do you understand something? She was the same person who helped me to turn everything again. She's a good girl. Very hardworking woman. If you know her, you dare not come closer her. The way she will package everything. And that is how she is. Love them. Forgive. Mojukuro. Menukuro. Yetenumonkomburuku. Oh, yes. The children will not come closer to your family. 
to both family. Always remember to apply the principle of love. L-O-V-E is the reason why we don't see faults in people. Love them. They are not perfect. And on that, this one, I said, we wrote here, no matter what happens, always remember that you are a believer. You cannot put up a fight with your in-laws. As a child of God. I told you that for once, I have never stand in front of any of my in-laws and be talking. Yeah. I would rather keep quiet. When it goes, it goes to say, my mother-in-law will say, yeah, me see, she will not talk. I'll be quiet. Till, till now, 20 years, counting. I have never for once have any. I told my husband, I don't know how to fight. Me, Jari, me, Mojago. It's not because I want to be like that, but I want to have peace. Number two. Stay neutral. If your spouse have misunderstanding with his family, be neutral. Pray for him and encourage him or her to settle with them. Don't be part of it and say, "We want phenomenal, but we far." Show them, show them that you are you senior high in age of what use. What do you want to gain from it? Why are you foiling it, the problem? Why are you making them to be fighting each other? I've told you, I'm the last one. People come to me, all my brothers, my sister, they used to come. Only my sister nowadays, I don't used to listen to her. But my brothers, they come to me. And if they tell me anything, I will tell them, do you see that my husband has never for once called you to come and settle our fight? Why don't you go and settle your own? Leave me now. Some of them will say, hey, well, we know you are a pastor. That's why I come here. I say, you are putting me into, into much problem if you come to come and be reporting. Who has said you? You are a Jumilo. The, the person I follow, you four years to senior me. Why are you disturbing me? That is my own life. I, I will now keep. Greet them. How are you? Shall I feel? That's how I do my own. And I pray along. Don't, don't fuel the fight. Don't say, What? Do you want to take trophy from it? No. Let there be peace. Let the love continue. So that at the end, we will be rewarded in heaven for whatsoever we are doing here on earth. God bless you. Thank you for the grace. Are you blessed? So we are not coming back to in-law matters again at Utepari next week, Sunday. Okay, when I say we are praying for family, then uh, next week, Sunday, we are going into another part of marriage too. But please, all these things you have learned, go and put them in practice. If you are not in good relationship with your in-laws, please go and reactivate that relationship. Amen? Go and do what? Go and reactivate that relationship. And that, like she said, she has never uh, had any uh, confrontational uh, thing with any of my family members. I can prove that. Because the family member can't do it by a taboo at a bon. Now I just say, you will hold me, Nick, but it doesn't have a minute that a cucumber. She knows that when it comes to that one, too, I will stay clear. I would rather keep to myself than be fight. You don't fight your in laws, you don't fight them. They are the one that gave you either the wife or the husband, they gave you. You don't fight them, you build relationship with them. They are the ones that will be praying for you. And funny enough, one thing you should understand is if God gives you privilege to marry from somewhere, it is because they are relevant to your destiny. They have a role to play in your destiny. So go and say to all our young people, keep this message like we always say in our place, with your left arm. Emma Fishekini, Emma Fichel. Get the mama, Badura, and sister. He will do a magic bar, he will call me. Ni, he lay. To back Badura, do I own my bathroom or no? Hello? Oh, my God. So, build relationship with your in-laws so that you can establish your, your, your stay in your home. Marriage is not a place where you go for part-time. It's a place you are going to be established. If you are telling your husband, I want to meet, I want to be with your mom, I want to see some of your family members, he will be saying, there is no need. 
There's no need. He said, Lie. Oh, need. Go and establish it. The Lord will help you. The Lord's hand of grace will be with you. Please come up. Let's anoint 